Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome to, well, a pretty mild day here in Pennsylvania. So the weather the past couple weeks have been real weird. Um, I guess next week's the official start of summer, but it was like 95 last week, it was humid. This week, getting up in the morning, walking outside, it's like 50 degrees, it's like 75 right now. Um, it's been nice, but it's perfect weather for working outside of the garage and working on our 24 valve coming. So we're going to take a little break from the race truck and work on this because we had a um, part that we were waiting on come in. So last time when we put our flux diesel injection um, 90 horse injectors in, we noticed that our tappet cover was pretty grimy and nasty. So we decided we're going to go ahead and tackle that while we have this thing apart and get rid of that leak and kind of upgrade our cover a little bit. So what we got was this billet tappet cover. Now, guys, you can spend quite a bit on these tappet covers. There's some companies like GNR, um, Bean. They make some very nice ones with some vented. Uh, well, it's not vented. It's a. It's a baffled vent, um, so that way it's kind of baffling the oil, keeping the oil in there in your crankcase breather. But really for this project, I didn't really see the need to kind of go that route. So we got the cheap eBay one, which I have to say, I was kind of skeptical because it is more than half the price. More than half. It is less than half the price of the other ones. So this thing is actually pretty solid. And one thing I really do like about it, it is an O-ring. O-ring on our outside, O-ring on each of our bolt holes. And then it also has a vent, you know, a space for two vent fittings, which are right here, two ORB fittings, which we will have to come up with a catch can or something for them. And then it's got some stainless Allen head cap screws. So that is our plan. We're going to replace our tappet cover, which means we need to pull the VP44 injection pump off our injection lines. Uh, we're going to have to undo this nut, pull this gear off. We'll get our back on top dead center back you know so our timing marks all line up and kind of go forward from there and then try and clean up all that gunk while we're in there then we can kind of keep proceeding forward as you can see we have boxes of stuff for this truck to get this thing back on the road and better than ever so that's the plan we're going to get our new shiny tappet cover on in there i do remember the description for this tappet cover saying for vp44 we will have to do a little bit of clearancing but it made it seem as though it's very mild i looked in the comments or whatever questions and everybody kind of said it's not a big deal also when i was looking at this if you go on ebay and find this tappet cover right there in the description they have replacement o-ring kits for this so that way if you ever have to pull it you can get a new o-ring for it so let's get to it. Let's get that VP44 off and get our new tappet cover in.
right, so we got our tappet cover off. I did try and clean up the block a little bit with some degreaser and uh, like a wire brush. But there's our um, push rods. As you guys can see, there is our push rods and tappet. So if we pull up on that, you know, you can see how this normally operates. You know, that tappet is running on the cam and then it pushes the push rod up, pushes the rocker, pushes the valve down. So we got our cover off, which is here. Um, it did have this little bump out. And I really don't know what it's for. Um, I think somebody had commented below before saying that on the P-pump trucks, on the 12 valves, uh, that this actually is a vent, which it isn't on this. It's just kind of its own little bump out. But got that out, got the rest of the insulation, got our VP44 out. The VP44 undid all of our injection lines. Also undid this, uh, I guess, return line as well. I guess that's a return. Yeah. So undid this as well, but I didn't undo it at the banjo bolt because I don't have any more banjo washers. So I just use this fitting here, a little um, like a compression fitting. But there is four bolts on this that you got to get from the back side. Kind of hard to get to a couple in the back. And then there was actually this bracket, which I believe is actually a support bracket for the power steering pump. I think. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Well, there's that other bracket that we had to take off too in order to uh, get this thing out. We had to take this off. So we'll go ahead and install our new billet valve cover or valve cover, tap it cover. We will also be adding RTV to this um, rather than just trusting the O-ring. I figure little RTV would never hurt. So we're going to put a little, R little bead RTV around here get this thing on there and uh, just kind of keep moving on. There is Allen head cap screws that came with this, but on a couple spots, we will be reusing these. Uh, I don't even know what you'd call them. They're just a stud with some thread. They're just a stud with a female thread on the one side. That's gonna be where our ECM mounts. So there's also one in the back for this fuel line. So we'll be reusing those three um, on our belt valve cover, or tappet cover, I keep saying valve cover, but we'll get our tappet cover in there and kind of put this all back together and keep putting the truck back together. All right, so our billet tappet cover is in, even though you really can't tell. So you guys can see it is rather shiny back there. It is installed. Um, so what I did was I actually put all the Allen head cap screws in. I tightened everything down so we had good crush on our O-rings. And then I had to kind of drop back and think of a new plan. So I can find them. So these spacers to mount the computer, uh, the thread was actually too short. So 
we weren't able to do that like i said i ran all the allen head cap screws in to get that thing in square and you know just get good crush on our o-ring so then i took the two out for the computer um i actually put some washers for spacers and then we just ran a regular bolt in there and you know applied pressure that way so this tappet cover like i showed you guys has o-rings um, where the threaded portion goes in so as long as we're squeezing on the cover we should have a good seal it's not like uh, the old setup where it kind of relied on like a little uh, little washer or sealing washer on the actual bolt itself or on the bottom of one of these uh you know like thread extensions or whatever so got that all in we got our two um breathers in the back there i haven't I just have caps on them for now. I haven't decided fully what we're going to do. Put a comment down below if you've got a good idea. Um, I'd like to run some kind of a catch can, but I'd love to have something that dumped oil, the oil back into the engine. Uh, but we'll figure that out even if we have something we got to dump out there, uh, you know, every once in a while to begin with. That'll be fine. So, tablet covers in, computers in, computers hooked up. Also, our injection pump is in. So, that's one thing this cheap... Um, Tappet cover said that we are going to have to clearance for the VP44. Well, needless to say, we did not have to do that. VP44 went right in, was able to tighten all four of the nuts on the back here, get our little support bracket in the back on. Our electrical is connected. We have all of our injection lines connected. They're all connected to the feed tubes for the injectors. Uh, got the uh, rockers in. They are tightened down. They're not torqued yet, and we still have to run valve lash. Um, that's something else that needs done. Oh, another thing, I did take some Scotch Brite to this intake plenum cover and just kind of cleaned it up a little, made it look a little more presentable. And we also got our VP44 gear back on. So as you guys can see, it is timed correctly. Um, it's kind of you kind of got to line up the um, uh, the key and try and see, you know, get it as close as you can, and just kind of fiddle with it a little. It's not a big deal but uh, just got these marks lined back up, got the key lined up, got the nut on. So also, guys, there's been some debate. Some of you guys had said about it. There is, if you guys can see right here, a dowel. So uh, on the 12 valves, this is a pretty big deal. The uh, killer dowel pin that we've all heard about, this dowel can you know, kind of work its way loose and then come in your timing cover here and create all kinds of havoc. So on the VP44s, if you look around, people say they have one, they don't, blah, blah, blah. Well, there is a dowel there. Ours wasn't loose. I put a magnet on it, didn't move. But what I did was I took a chisel, if you guys can see there. I took a chisel and just kind of um, made marks on either side so it kind of rolled the aluminum in so that way that thing can't come out. So we don't have like a cover, but the aluminum's rolled in there so that thing can't rattle out into the timing case. So. Really, we have valve lash to run, get our uh, valve cover on, get our intake manifold in. We need to put our main front main seal in, which we have a repair sleeve for. We have to do all that. Get our front timing cover on, and then we should be done with the engine and kind of work our way back forward with intercooler, radiator, all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be in the days to come. Like I said, we do have a multitude of parts sitting here. Um, waiting to go onto this truck and once we get all that stuff on there we'll be able to rip this thing again I'm going to uh, try to charge the um, AC system see if we can get the AC working um, I don't know it probably needs a uh, condenser or whatever but I know these trucks are notorious for that back in the day even though even though uh, Veronica over there she's still going strong she uh, she has her same uh, AC stuff from her one it's still nice and cold Another thing, um, if you guys comment down below, has anybody put the, um, man, it's like, uh, the name escapes me. Can you put this part of the AC system, is that the condenser? Wait a minute. I guess it's the evaporator that's underneath the dash. I don't know, I can't, it's too late, I can't remember the names, but can, does any, has anybody put this part of the AC system and this part of the transmission cooling system between the rad and the intercooler, so you just have the intercooler out front. Um, comment down below if you've done that. Um, I'm thinking about trying to do that just to give it a little cleaner look, make it look kind of neat, you know, with the, I always like that look with the intercooler right there, but I don't want to sacrifice the transmission cooling 
or the air conditioning which i don't even know if we can get to work so anyway guys uh, it's late as you can hear i am rambling on and on um don't even know the names of half this stuff so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed we're getting closer to getting the second gen back on the road and you know having some fun with it so i hope you enjoyed please like the video subscribe down below i'll catch you guys on the next one get out in your garage get the wrench in on your truck 